The General Assembly should be, in the coming weeks, considering a measure to expand the use in Vermont of tax increment financing, TIF. Do the promises of TIFs, a popular yet controversial financing technique, outweigh the perils? They do, provided they are used prudently and there is adequate public accountability built into the financing plans. The policy objective underlying TIFs is the elimination of blight in the poorest neighborhoods. But there is real concern that the benefits of the money raised through the TIF model may not be actually realized by those neighborhoods. Critics of TIFs claim that this device has too frequently become a financing source for municipalities to speculate on private redevelopment projects. Here's how it works. TIFs are used in Vermont and around the United States as an incentive to local governments to promote economic development and as a subsidy for community improvement and public redevelopment projects. Under the TIF model, real estate taxes continue to be owed and paid to the municipality on the original value of specific property or on the overall values in a defined TIF property district that is being developed, while funds are borrowed by the state from the bond market, supported by the state's general fund, to help pay for the improvements that state borrowing is done on the strength of the prospective tax increases that will result from the enhanced value of the specific property being developed or on the overall increases in taxes that will be collected within the municipality's entire TIF district. The increased taxes are committed to be used once collected to pay down the debt it's obvious why municipalities would find attractive the opportunity of converting the promise of future tax increases to finance street improvement projects, traffic signals, sewers, and other public infrastructure that will in turn attract and support private development. Further, private developers can be convinced through such financing to participate in robust development plans. However, along with the promise, TIFs are subject to risks. Will local officials be sufficiently savvy and watchful for undisclosed and hidden costs, financial and otherwise? Will the result of the development be the displacement of lower income residents or small businesses with higher income ones? Will neighboring businesses incur after the completion of the development burdensome local expenses and changes in competitive and demographic factors that will adversely affect their ability to retain their pre-development customer base? Will local politics and political favoritism steer financing into unsound or unfairly favored development projects? Will adequate assurances be obtained from developers that, having realized their anticipated profits, they will reinvest in the maintenance, management, and upkeep of the developments. Part of the allure of TIFs, of course, is added commerce. In Vermont, where there are struggling neighborhoods and downtown projects facing service cuts and with it the potential of blight, TIF financing may result in the creation of new, high revenue generating boundaries. No doubt, Vermont needs tax incentives to attract business opportunities and to market to outside developers so as to increase development in our state. TIFs have so far been successfully used in Vermont to support infrastructure projects. They have proven themselves over the few TIF projects we have and seem to be a good tool. TIFs can, if structured properly, encourage deliberate, and sound municipal planning accompanied by financial measurement tools that promote public accountability. TIFs require public officials to plan and monitor a development or improvement project cautiously and to understand precisely the before and after effects of the area's revenue levels. Vermont has alternatives to, to TIFs. Other options include special assessment districts, 
developmental impact fees, and the imposition of land value taxes. These are more targeted financing tools that have advantages over the simple funding of projects through the general fund. However, these tools are infrequently used to finance public works and infrastructure projects. Rather, they are typically used to support and incentivize private development projects. There is no reason why these alternative financing structures should not also be considered an alternative source of monies to finance public works. Ultimately, should TIFs continue to be used for financing roads, airports, transportation, and other infrastructure projects? Yes. Should they be open to be used for all projects to include private development activity? Possibly, but not without carefully considering the magnitude of the TIFs to be approved the short-term impact on the general fund, and the risks inherent in the possibility of not realizing the expected tax revenue payback. Plainly, the general fund should not become a TIF slush fund. Municipalities must clearly understand and be held to their responsibility for payback, whether or not tax revenue increases are realized. With proper due diligence and consideration of, at a minimum, the questions posed above, TIFs can be a strong choice for Vermont.